Thank you, Kath. <clears throat> Thank you, Kathleen. So our next speaker is our Madam President, Marian Barrows. Marian Barrows, DTM3, will be giving her speech from the presentation mastery pathway, level number one, writing a speech with purpose. The purpose of the speech is to select a topic that appeals to you. It can be anything. Be sure your topic is narrow enough to be an effective five to seven minute speech. Please welcome Marian. Marian, stage is yours. The name of the speech is communication. The name of the speech is communication, right? That's not written here. Well, I thought it was. Anyways, um, all right. Fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests. A young fellow named George was buying his very first car. So he went from door to door in his neighborhood so he could try to, to uh, do some odd jobs to make some money. He knocked on a couple doors and finally Mrs. Schnauzer answers the door. He said, do you have any work that I could do to make some money? And she said, hmm, I know you could paint that porch in the back. She, they agreed on a price and she showed George where the paint and where the brushes were. George was gone for some time. Then he knocked on the door again and he said, Mrs. Schnauzer, I am all done. And she was so thrilled. She said, my husband is going to be so happy. That's been on the list for a long time. And she paid him the money. He went to leave. And then he turned back and said, by the way, Mrs. Schnauzer, that's a porch. That's not a porch back there. That's a Lamborghini. Fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests, communication. Why is it so difficult? We think we're communicating like this, when in truth, it's more like this. Why? Well, in order to communicate, we use either words, gestures, or the written word. But in order for communication to take place, somebody has to communicate something and somebody else has to receive that communication. But, there are more factors than that because not everybody assimilates information the same. Two blondes go to Disney World. They drive in the driveway. They see a big sign that says, Disney left. The two of them looked at each other with sadness and they pulled out and went back home. Why is it so challenging? And then we factor different languages, different cultures, different customs. I'm sure we've all been on the phone with an important phone call where the person you're speaking to that's supposed to be speaking English, you can't figure out what in the heck they're talking about. Now, John Gray wrote a book years ago called Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Well, he recognized that men thought more logically and practically and women more emotionally and feeling. So when they try to connect, it didn't work very well. It was more like this. But after reading his book and doing some of the using some of the tools, that gap could close at least a little bit. Now, besides the verbal word, we can use gestures to get our point across. Now, if you're a young child and your parent is coming at you like this, they don't have to say a word, but you know you're in trouble. Even if you don't know why you're in trouble, you know you're in trouble. Or as a parent, if your child goes, you know the communication link between you and that child has been closed down. There's no more communication coming along. Now we can also have two lovers staring intently into each other's eyes with no word said for at least the first week or two. <laughs> or we could have one word conversations like whatever or really wondering if we can tense our communication if we don't get the point across even better than long dangling questions or sentences. Now, I mentioned that we could write things out and that would be another way to communicate. But 
have you ever read an email or a text one day and then you reread it the next day and you realize it means something totally different than what you thought it did when you first read it? Again, very challenging to communicate even with the written word. And then of course there are gestures. Someone could be in a, use a flick of a wrist in traffic and the other driver knows you're not too happy with them. So how do we close this gap? Well, there was a young woman who was had, had a dream. And in the dream, her husband gave her a brand new diamond ring. It was so beautiful and sparkly on her hand. When she woke up the next morning, she told her husband about the dream. And the, the husband smiled at her and he said, honey, by the end of the day, you'll know what that dream means. She was on cloud nine all the week, all day long, visualizing what that beautiful diamond ring was going to look like on her hand. Well, that night, her husband came home from work, and he did have a gift for her, but she thought it was going to be a small little box. Instead, it was a package this big that was wrapped. She opened it, and it was a book that said Dream Interpretation. Well, think about it. The question she asked was, I wonder what this means. Her husband said, I will, by the end of the day, you'll know what this means. But in her mind, she thought he was going to tell, was going to bring home that diamond ring and she would be so happy. Now, I have a friend named Bernie. Bernie was an, is an older fellow, been married a couple times. And he decided the number one relationship in his life was that with his wife. And he really wanted to make a connection with her. So he made up this formula, which I think is really cool. It's called stop, look, and listen. He made a commitment to his wife that when she spoke, no matter where she was in the house, he was going to stop what he was doing, walk over to where she was, really look her in the face and listen intently to what she had to say. Now, I'm not sure if that's the end all formula, but how many times do we do that? Or how many times do we not really listen to what the person says? So it's not really a surprise that there isn't a communication with that. So at this point in my speech, oftentimes there would be a call to action. And other than maybe reading John Gray's book or using the stop, look, and listen formula, I'm not real sure if we'll ever figure out to, how to communicate. But for one thing for sure, you've learned by this speech, and that is communication is not easy, and you know why now. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, right now, one minute 